Hi, Heart Room friends. It was so nice to see all of you guys on Google Hangout this morning to read our story, The New Friend. And um, today we're going to pick up where we left off, The BFD by Rod Ball. I don't have any puppet friends with me today because Zoe's outside playing right now. She's her schoolwork. But we're going to go on. And if you want to follow along with me, we're actually on page number 74. And if you remember, the giants are throwing around poor BFG. So here we go. We're sort of about halfway through that page. The bone cruncher ran forward and caught the tumbling BFG and immediately swung up again. Catch him, child chewer, he shouted. And so it went on. The giants were playing ball with the BFG, vying with each other to see who could throw him the highest. Sophie dug her nails into the sides of the pocket, trying to prevent herself from tumbling out when she was upside down. She felt as though she were in a barrel going over the Niagara, Niagara Falls, and all the time there was the fearful danger that one of the giants would fail to catch the BFG, and he would go crashing to the ground. Catch him, meat dripper. Catch him, gizzard gulper. Catch him, meat masher. Catch him, blood bottler. Catch him, catch him, catch him. In the end, they got bored with this game. They dumped the poor BFG on the ground. He was dazed and shattered. They gave him a few kicks and shouted, run, you little runt, let us see how fast he was galloping. The BFG ran, what else could he do? The giants picked up rocks and hurled them after him. He managed to dodge them. Ready little runt, they shouted, troggy little twit, shivly little shrimp, mucky little midget. At last, the BFG got clear of them all and in another couple of minutes, the pack of giants was out of sight over the horizon. Sophie popped her head up from the pocket. I didn't like that, she said. Phew, said the BFG. Few and far between. They was in a nasty, crutching mood today, was they not? I is sorry you was having such a whirly gig time. No worse than you, Sophie said. Will they ever really hurt you? I isn't ever trusting them, the BFG said. How do they actually catch the humans they eat, Sophie asked. They is usually just sticking an arm in through the bedroom window and snitching them from their beds, the BFG said. Like you did to me? Ah, but I isn't eating you, the BFG said. How else do they catch them, Sophie asked. Sometimes, the BFG said, they is swimming up from the sea like fishes with only their head showing above water. And then out comes a big hairy hand and grabbles someone off the beach. Children as well? Often, chiddlers, the BFG said. Little chiddlers who is building sandcastles on the beach that is who the swimming ones are after. Little children's is not so tough to eat as grandmamas, so says the child chewing giant. As they talked, the BFG was galloping fast over the land. Sophie was standing straight up in his waistcoat pocket now and holding onto the edge with both hands. Her head and shoulders were in the open and the wind was blowing in her hair. How else do they catch people, she asked. All of them is having their own special ways of catching the human being, the BFG said. The meat dripping giant is preferring to pretend he is a big tree growing in the park. He is standing in the park in the dusky evening and he is holding great big branches over his head. And there he is waiting until some happy families is coming to have a picnic under the spreading tree. The meat dripping giant is watching them as they lay out their little picnic. But in the end, it is the meat dripper who is having the picnic. It's too awful, Sophie cried. The gizzard gulping giant is a city lover, the BFG went on. The gizzard gulper is lying high up between the roofs of houses in the big cities. He is lying there, snugly as a sniggler, and watching the human beings walking on the street below. And when he sees one that looks like it has a wopsy good flavor, he grabs it. He is simply reaching down and snitching it off the street like a monkey is taking a nut. He says it is nice to be able to pick and choose what you have for your supper. He says it is like choosing from a menu. Don't people see him doing it? Sophie asked. Never is they seeing him. Do not forget it is dusky dark at this time. Also, the guzzard gulper has a very fast arm. His arm is going up and down quicker than squickers. But if all these people are disappearing every night, surely there is some sort of outcry, Sophie said. The world is a whopping big place, the BFG said. It has a hundred different countries. The giants is clever. They is careful not to be skiddling off to the same country too often. They is always switch fiddling around. Even so, Sophie said. Do not forget, the BFG said, that human beings is disappearing everywhere all the time, even without the giants guzzling them up. Human beings is killing each other much quicker than the giants is doing it. But they don't eat each other, Sophie said. 
Giants isn't eating each other either, the BFG said. Nor is Giants killing each other. Giants is not very lovely, but they is not killing each other. Nor is Crocodilies neither killing Crocodilies. Nor is Pussycats killing Pussycats. Well, they kill mice, Sophie said. Ah, but they is not killing their own kind, the BFG said. Human beings is the only animals that is killing their own kind. Don't poisonous snakes kill each other, Sophie asked. She was searching desperately for another creature that behaved as badly as the human. Even poison snakes is never killing each other, the BFG said. Nor is the most fearsome creatures like tigers and rhinoceroses. None of them is ever killing their own kind. Has you ever thought about that? Sophie kept silent. I is not understanding human beings at all, the BFG said. You is a human being, and you is saying it is grizzling and horgesta for giants to be eating human beings, right or left? Right, Sophie said. But human beings is squishing each other all the time, the BFG said. They is shooting guns and going up in aeroplanes to drop their bombs on each other's heads every week. Human beings is always killing other human beings. He was right. Of course he was right, and Sophie knew it. She was beginning to wonder whether humans were actually any better than giants. Even so, she said, defending her own race, I think it's rotten that those foul giants should go off every night to eat humans. Humans have never done them any harm. That is what the little piggy wig is saying every day, the BFG answered. He is saying, I has never done any harm to the human being, so why should he be eating me? Oh dear, Sophie said. The human beings is making rules to suit themselves, the BFG went on. But the rules they is making do not suit the little piggy wiggies. Am I right or am I left? You're right, Sophie said. Giants is also making rules. Their rules is not suiting the human beings. Everybody is making his own rules to suit himself. But you don't like it that those beastly giants are eating human beings every night, do you? Sophie asked. I do not, the BFG answered firmly. One is right, not making two lefts. Is you quite cozy down there in my pocket? Oh, I'm fine, Sophie said. Then suddenly, once again, the BFG went into that magical top gear of his. He began hurtling forward with phenomenal leaps. His speed was unbelievable. The landscape became blurred, and again Sophie had to duck down into the whistling gale to save her head from being blown off her shoulders. She crouched in the pocket and listened to the wind screaming past. It came sniffling in through the tiny peephole in the pocket and whooshed around her like a hurricane. But this time the BFG didn't stay in top gear long. It seemed as though he had some barrier to cross, a vast mountain perhaps, or an ocean, or a great desert, but having crossed it, once again slowed down to his normal gallop, and Sophie was able to pop her head up and look out once more at the view. She noticed immediately that they were now in an altogether paler country. The sun had disappeared above a film of vapor. The air was becoming cooler every minute. The land was flat and treeless, and there seemed to be no color in it at all. Every minute the mist became thicker, the air became cooler still, and everything became paler and paler, until soon there was nothing but gray and white all around them. They were in a country of swirling mists and ghostly vapors. There was some sort of grass underfoot, but it was not green. It was ashy gray. There was no sign of a creature and no sound at all except for the soft thud of the BFG's footsteps as he hurled on through the fog. Suddenly he stopped. We is here at last, he announced. He bent down and lifted Sophie from his pocket and put her on the ground. She was still in her nightie and her feet were bare. She shivered and stared around her at the swirling mists and ghostly vapors. Where are we? She asked. We is in dream country, the BFG said. This is where the dreams is beginning. We'll read more tomorrow. Have a good night.